Hello students, I am Sunil Kumar, PZT Commerce, Kendri Vidyalaya, Sectorate, Arkipuram. Let me welcome you to our another episode of Business Studies Class 12. Students, in our previous episode, we have discussed about the functional organizational structure. The organizational structure which is suitable for the smaller and medium type of business organizations and which is decided and grouped on the basis of functions to be performed in the organization. In our today's episode, we will discuss about the divisional organizational structure. The organizational structure which is more suitable for the large business organizations. The business organizations which deal in more than one product, say the cosmetics, textiles and toys. If the business is dealing in more than one product, then divisional organizational structure is preferred. Now, let me start with our divisional organizational structure. What is the meaning of divisional organizational structure? The divisional organizational structure is that structure in which all the activities are grouped and put in a particular division and not into a particular department. Since there are so many divisions working under a single business organization and each division is having its own functional organizational structure. Each division is having their finance department, marketing department, production department, personal department and research and development department. So we will find the functional department within the divisional organizational structure. So if we compare the functional organizational structure with the divisional organizational structure, easily we can take it out that the functional is meant for a single product but the divisional is meant for many products. In functional, the things are categorized on the basis of functions performed in the organization, whereas in divisional organizational structure, the things are based on the various type of products manufactured by the business organization. So the scope of divisional organizational structure is greater or you can say more than the functional organizational structure. Now let we have the advantages of divisional organizational structure. The first advantage of divisional organizational structure is product specialization. In divisional structure, each division is given a particular product to manufacture and all the activities relating to the manufacturing of products are given to that division only. It helps in getting the specialization in manufacturing of the same product. The second advantage of divisional structure is fast decision making. In each division, the divisional head will ensure that all the decisions will be taken very quickly since the division is working totally different unit. It means they are getting the authorization from the organization side that they are not going to ask anyone about the decisions taken by the divisional heads in their own divisions. The third advantage of divisional structure is greater accountability. Each division is independent. It means the division is working in its own way. Decisions taken within the division will be helping the organization in getting its objectives. But sometimes the division takes wrong decisions and in this way the division will be making losses in the organization. It helps the organization in fixing the responsibility of that division that because of the division the overall objectives of the organizations could not be achieved. So organization will be making sufficient changes in that division only. So students, in divisional structure, greater accountability is there for the divisional heads. They are completely responsible for incurring losses or making profits for the overall organization. Our next advantage of divisional structure is expansion and growth. This is the best feature and advantage available in divisional structure. If in functional structure any modification is done, the entire activities of the organization are disturbed. But in divisional structure, if you are going to start another division, the existing divisions will not get disturbed. Take an example, if the divisions working under the organization are the cosmetic, medicine and toy manufacturing, and if they would like to start automobiles division to that organization, they can easily start that division since it won't hamper the existence and the working style of other divisions which are already existing. Now students, let me discuss disadvantages of divisional structure. 
you may think if there are so many advantages in divisional structure is there any drawback of that certainly there are drawbacks of the divisional structure as well the very first drawback is conflicts as we know in divisional structure so many divisions are working in the organization each division is getting autonomy to take all the decisions and they are not going to ask anyone whatever they are doing in their divisions as a result when organization is giving funds to the various divisions then there may conflict arise between the divisions in getting the finance from the organization side they may blame the overall management that they are giving less funds for their own division and because of which the performance of individual division is suffering the second disadvantage is ignoring organizational interest each divisional head will be taking care of his own division because the performance of each division will be compared with the divisions which are working in the organizations each division will try to put best of their knowledge and ability and will try to produce more and more amount of profits they will be thinking of their own division only and they will not be thinking organizational goals which creates another hurdle in the achievement of organizational objectives the third disadvantage of divisional structure is costly in order to expand the business or to carry out the activities in divisional structure always the involvement of cost is there because there is overlapping as far as resources are concerned each division will be requiring different type of materials and each type of material will be used in those departments only which may increase the cost of the divisional organizational structure students now we have discussed about the divisional organizational structure its merits and demerits now you may be thinking what are the types of organization we are having we are having two types of organization first the formal organization and second informal organization first the formal organization the organization which is deliberately established this organization is helping the business in the attainment of organizational objectives as systematic working takes place in that organization establishment of authority and responsibility is there which helps a person to know about the superior and who is his subordinate so once these responsibility and authority is established superior subordinate relationship is established it's very very easy to communicate and to complete the work in formal organization all the orders are coming in a proper way so here the scalar chain principle of management is followed let me give you an example to just clear this particular point in kendriya vidyalaya sangathan at the top we are having the commissioner if the commissioner has to send in some information to the school won't be sending the information directly to that particular school he will be asking the additional commissioner and then additional commissioner will be asking the deputy commissioner the deputy commissioner will be asking the assistant commissioner then the principal and then the information will be reaching to the school so here in formal organizational structure we find that everything every post is fixed the flow of information is in a proper way the task is completed or not that accountability always goes from bottom to top again in a sequential way students moreover in this organizational type we are having the unity of command the unity of command it means a person is getting all instructions from a single person only and it is established only in formal organization so till now it is understood that formal organization is the one which is existing and developed with proper planning in which unity of command principle is followed in which the scalar chain is followed it means all the information is coming in a proper way and accountability is also going from bottom to top in a proper way now students after understanding the meaning of formal organization now let we have advantages which are available in formal organization the first advantage is fixation of responsibilities as i mentioned earlier organizational hierarchy is established in formal organization all the posts are decided superior subordinate relationship is existing and orders are coming always in written form and once the signature of an employee is on that particular paper he is kept responsible and accountable for the completion of the job so here the fixation of the responsibilities are very very easy in formal organization and no person can just get away from his responsibilities for not completing the task 
and he will be given the punishment. If there is a provision of the punishment, if the person who is given order in writing and not carrying out the orders properly. The second advantage of formal organization is unity of command. I mentioned in the feature of formal organization that each person will be getting order from a single boss only. It helps in removing all the confusion in the minds of the people that to whom they have to report and from whom they have to take the orders and instructions. So here it is very, very easy to know about one's responsibilities and accountability. The next advantage of formal organization is effective accomplishment of goals. Formal organization always helps the business organization in the achievement of organizational goals. As each and every work is grouped in a proper way, no activity of the organization is left out. So every activity will be done to the perfection and it helps in the attainment of organizational objectives. And it is made possible only by the formal organization. The next advantage is creation of chain of command. Creation of chain of command, it means there is one post, then the next, and then the next, and in this way superior subordinate relationship is there. It creates a chain of command. No information will flow immediately from one person to another person. No information will flow from one person to another person by breaking the chain of command. Students, in case of emergency, this chain of command can be broken, which is known as gangplank. But in formal organization, these happen only in exceptional circumstances. Now, the next advantage of formal organization is more emphasis on work. The formal organization is only focusing on getting the work from the employees and their social requirements, their psychological satisfaction is ignored. But still, since it is focusing only on the work in the organization, which brings more profits to the organization, so we can say, yes, the formal organization is the one which is required, which must be there in a business. Otherwise, it is almost impossible for the business to operate its activities in normal way and achieve its organizational objectives. Students, now after understanding the advantages of formal organization, let we have disadvantages of formal organization. The very first disadvantage is procedural delays. As we have discussed, there are a hierarchy in an organization of the posts. So once the one information has to come from bottom to top or from top to bottom, it takes a lot of time because when it reaches to a particular person, the person may be absent on that particular day. As a result, the file and the information will remain in that office only. And it takes a lot of time to reach it to the destination. So in this way, procedural delays takes place in formal organization, which is a very big demerit of formal organization. The second demerit is ignores social need of employees. Yes, the formal organization only concentrates on taking the work from the people. They are not taking care of their psychological satisfaction because they are the human beings, they are the social animal. If they are working in a particular organization, the recognition must be there. But that type of recognition is not made available in the formal organization. That is why it is having the second demerit of the formal organization. The last demerit of formal organization is emphasis on work only. The formal organization is only meant for taking the work from the employees. It is only meant for meeting organizational objectives, which brings monotony to the work of the people, since no entertainment is attached to that. So these are the demerits of formal organization. Now we have come to an end of this episode and in this we have understood about the divisional organizational structure, its meaning, advantages, disadvantages and formal organization meaning, advantages and disadvantages. And in our next episode, students will discuss about informal organization, its meaning, advantages and disadvantages so that you can compare the formal organization with informal organization very, very easily. So that is the end of it. Thank you.